Hey guys, welcome back to Pop em Up Chem. In this video, we're going to be looking at electrophilic substitution, which we can kind of think of as a combination of the other mechanisms that we've been looking at. And really, we're going to be focusing on two reactions of benzene. So we're going to look at the substitutions of benzene and how they're different than how we might initially expect and formulate some mechanisms for these. But first, as always, question to get started on. Pause the video to have a go at that. So hopefully when looking at this one and drawing it out, you saw that it was a primary halogenoalkane, primary, of course, not going to be able to stabilize any carbocation intermediate. So we're going to have an SN2 reaction where the nucleophile, which in this case is the hydroxide ion, is going to attack the electron deficient carbon bonded to the bromine. This is going to form our intermediate anion, which is going to have the long range interactions of the OH and the BR before the BR finally leaves and gives us our product butanol. Now, when we first look at the diagram of benzene, we may be tempted to think that it might undergo electrophilic addition like we did with alkenes, where we get the double bond attacking the electrophile. However, we have to remember that this is a representation of benzene that doesn't necessarily fit with reality because we haven't accounted for the fact that the bond order is 1.5 and we have the delocalized electrons. The single double bond is just a way for us to understand the structure. So it doesn't actually undergo this electrophilic addition reaction that we might expect. Indeed, the double bond is going to be reactive, but it's going to reform because of the delocalization energy and the stability of benzene. What we end up instead is the double bond will be reformed and one hydrogen will be lost and the electrophile will substitute in where that lost hydrogen once was. So we'll have the double bond broken initially and we'll have an, a reactive intermediate and then the double bond will be reformed and the electrons from the bond with hydrogen will be used to then restore the delocalized system to the benzene ring with the new group attached. Let's have a look at a generic mechanism where we'll just call the electrophile in this case an E plus so we can see an overview of the mechanism. Now it's important to remember that when we draw benzene like this that what we really mean is that there is a hydrogen on each of these carbons. That's important to remember for when we draw the um, attack of this double bond on the given electrophile, that we will form a carbon in place that has both one of those hydrogens and also the electrophile now attached to it, leaving one of the carbons with just one hydrogen and the other with a hydrogen and an electrophile. The hydrogen without the electrophile is going to be positively charged as it's lost that double bond. You can draw the electrophile on either of the carbons. They're both equivalent, just in case you were wondering. And you can also draw this kind of broken ring if we're used to drawing the benzene ring with the full circle in the middle. However, I recommend against this because sometimes it can be less clear where the electrons have come from and are going to, but it's also perfectly valid and you may see it in other examples online. The next step is that the electrons from the hydrogen bonded to the carbon with the electrophile go down towards the positive charge and reform the double bond that was there before, as we said, making that double bond. So again, completing the delocalized system of the benzene. But now we've replaced one of the hydrogens with the electrophile. And this mechanism holds true for all of these reactions. Let's do a couple of questions on that before we move on. First question, state why benzene undergoes substitution instead of addition reactions. Pause the video and have a go at that. Pop them up. 
Okay, if here you described anything about the delocalization energy or the extra stability of the structure of benzene, then you would have got the correct answer. Next question, draw the mechanism for the reaction of benzene with the C2H5 plus ion. The plus is obviously going to be on the carbon here. Pause the video to have a go at that. Pop them up. So the mechanism follows exactly the same pattern as we did before with E plus, except in this case, our electrophile is going to be R plus C2H5. Aside from that, it's going to work in exactly the same way where the electrons from the double bond will attack this electrophile. That's going to give us the C2H5 and hydrogen on one carbon and on the other, just the hydrogen with the positive charge. The electrons from the bond of that hydrogen then go down to that positive charge, forming once again our alternate single double bonds of our benzene ring while having substituted our electrophile C2H5. So while the mechanism always follows the same process, the question tends to be where are these electrophiles coming from? These reactive positive species that we need to do these reactions do not exist by themselves. You can't get bottles of C2H5+. So instead they have to be made in situ in the actual reaction and we're going to look at two of these so we're going to look for the nitration of benzene we're looking going to look at the production of the no2 plus electrophile and for the acylation of benzene we're going to look at the formation of the acylium ion that's the coch3 plus ion firstly we're going to look at the nitration of benzene. So nitration is really useful because nitrobenzene is used in the production of alanine and alanine has many industrial uses, including polymers, rubbers, pesticides, azo dyes, which is just normal dyes really, explosives and pharmaceuticals. So wide variety of uses. A famous use of nitration is the production of TNT, a very commonly known explosive, one of the first high explosives. And this takes toluene, which is the methyl group on the benzene ring, and nitrates it three times, giving this structure here, very reactive and very explosive. So I'll go through the mechanism for the nitration of benzene. However, you can have a go at this first as it does follow the same mechanism as we've already done. So pause the video and have a go at drawing the mechanism of benzene. Okay, so for the mechanism of the nitration of benzene, our E plus is now just NO2 plus the double bond, any of the double bonds will attack this, leaving us with the positive charge on the adjacent carbon and then the NO2 attached with another hydrogen group, then the electrons from that bond with the hydrogen and the carbon go down towards the positive charge and reform the delocalized single double bond benzene ring, giving us the benzene substituted with the NO2 group. Where does that NO2 come from? Well, it comes from the reaction of our sulfuric acid catalyst with concentrated nitric acid. In this situation, concentrated nitric acid acts as the base and accepts a proton from the sulfuric acid, forming H2NO3 plus and HSO4 minus. That H2NO3 plus is very reactive and there is a secondary reaction, which is the breakdown of that H2NO3 into our NO2 which is our electrophile plus and water. If we take the overall of this reaction, then we end up with sulfuric acid plus nitric acid goes to NO2 plus HSO4 minus and water. And you can remember 
either of these two. So you can use this overall equation or the two equations that show you the breakdown of the H2NO3 ion. Both of them would be valid answers if you were asked to describe how the electrophile is produced for the nitration of benzene. The more astute of you will notice here that we have a problem. That how can sulfuric acid be a catalyst when it doesn't exist in both the beginning and the end of the equation? A catalyst by definition not being used up in the reaction. Indeed, what happens is the acid is regenerated by the mechanism. It comes in in the last step of the reaction and picks up that proton that seems to always conveniently leave in the last step of the electrophilic substitution reaction. The hydrogen that gives up its electrons, that proton has to go somewhere and it goes just here. It is picked up by the HSO4 minus allowing those electrons to come and go down and reform the delocalized benzene ring system, which reforms H2SO4 and gives us our substituted benzene ring. So for the acylation of benzene, we're trying to add this C double bond O R group, CH3 as we looked at before, to the benzene if that arrow was going to the benzene ring. These are often used as precursors to resins, to coatings and inks, dyes and glues, similar things. They're also used in fragrances uh, such as almond fragrances, cherry fragrances also, jasmine and strawberries, as well as others. It's also a key component in a lot of drug synthesis too. But before we get into how we form this electrophile, why don't you have a go at drawing the mechanism of this with the COCH3 nucleophile plus charges on the carbon done with an AlCl3 catalyst. Don't worry about the catalyst for the moment. We're going to have a look at that in a little while. Pause the video to have a crack at that. Once again, you're going to follow exactly the same pattern that hopefully you're getting a little bit used to where the double bond, any of the double bonds from the benzene ring is going to attack the electrophile, in this case the acylium ion, and that is going to form our intermediate. And in the intermediate, we're going to have that electrophile, the acylium ion, bonded to one of the carbons with also its hydrogen still there. And on the adjacent carbon from the benzene ring, you're going to have that positive charge. And then the electrons from the bond with the hydrogen and the carbon come down to reform the delocalized single double bond benzene ring, but now substituted with, in this case, the acylium ion that we added. Now, after doing the nitration of benzene, hopefully you can see here that something needs to happen to that lonely proton that left in the middle step. So just like in the nitration of benzene, the catalyst is involved in both electrophile production and also in the removal of that proton from our intermediate. In this reaction, we're going to have an acyl chloride, which you can think of kind of like a ketone with the Cl replacing one of the R groups on the ketone. And this will react with our catalyst, which is AlCl3, by the chlorine leaving and taking its electrons with it to form Cl- and then that attacking the AlCl3 which has a reduced octet. That forms our acylium ion that's going to be used as our electrophile and it also forms the AlCl4- ion and the acylium ion will be used as the electrophile and the AlCl4 will be used as the HSO4 was in the nitration of benzene. So once again, the catalyst seemingly not acting as a catalyst by being involved in the reaction is going to be regenerated by picking up the hydrogen that needs to be removed when the electrons are going down back into the benzene ring in the intermediate step of the substitution of benzene with the acylium ion. 
The only difference here being that we're going to form three products because we're going to form our ALCL3 as well as our benzene ring that's been substituted. We're also going to form HCl. Now, you don't need to know the mechanism for the generation of the catalyst, but you do want to be able to draw the mechanism of the acylation of benzene with your ALCL4 coming in to pick up that hydrogen off the benzene ring as its electrons are used to go down and complete the delocalized system in the benzene ring. Time for a couple of questions. Whiteboards at the ready. First one, which species acts as an electrophile in the nitration of benzene? Pause the video. Pop them up. It is, of course, NO2+. Next, write an equation to show the production of the NO2 electrophile. Pause the video and have a go. Pop them up. For this one, you could have given two answers. You could have given the overall reaction of sulfuric acid with nitric acid to form NO2 plus and HSO4 minus plus H2O. Or you could have given it in two equations. The first one showing the reaction of sulfuric acid with HNO3 to form H2NO3 plus plus HSO4 minus and the second equation showing the breakdown of H2NO3 going to NO2 plus and water. Last question, draw the mechanism for the acylation of benzene. Pause the video to have a go at that. Pop them up. So hopefully you're becoming a little bit bored of drawing these mechanisms for the electrophilic addition with benzene. But here we will have, once again, the attack of the double bond on the electrophile, which will form our intermediate. The intermediate then has the hydrogen that is bonded to the carbon next to the substituent group we've just added will be removed by bonding with the attacking AlCl4 minus. Its electrons will go down, complete the ring and complete the substitution which will then give us our products ALCL3 and HCL to go with it. No videos or practicals to go with this one. As always, some questions. Practicing these mechanisms is going to be the best way for you to be able to be confident in your ability to draw them out in a stressful situation like an exam. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the channel and as always, practice makes slightly better.